Hello everyone, welcome to Bowser Training Lead Code Solution. If you want the best mock interview experience in North America, feel free to check us out at bowsertraining.org. And also we have this uh, pretty decent technical blog, uh, blog.bowsertraining.org that we periodically will post some either lead code solution or some system design topics that will, I believe will significantly benefit you. All right, so let's get to the point. Today we're continue to talk about the calculator problem. Apparently lead code, so we previously we talked about the basic calculator one and two, so now it's basic calculator three. Uh, so what is basic calculator three? So essentially is, you know, it has both four operators, plus, minus, times, divide, and also the left parentheses and the right parentheses. It almost looks like a real, um, calculator and uh, yeah there's always going to be spaces and uh, just uh, I want to point it out so they they said there will be non-negative integers you will see what uh, what's going on okay so the thought process is uh, ex essentially an extension to the original basic calculator one problem and the basic calculator two problem where you can click on the links here and see how we solve this um the thought process is still the same essentially having two stacks one stack for operator the other is for operands with exactly the same calculating preferences from both calculator one and both uh, and calculator two where is like how do we handle parentheses as long as you see a left parenthesis parenthesis you keep pushing to the operator stack and once you see the right one parenthesis you keep popping up until you see the left parentheses. And if you if you have a uh, basically uh, times and divided and your previous one is plus and minus, you should calculate or else if you have a plus and a minus and your previous one is times, you shouldn't really calculate. Um, yeah, so the, here I pointed out, this is assuming all the integers are non-negative. Non However, I think lead code here made a uh, mistake that it actually has the test case like this. So if you see the picture here, so I have this, um, ooh. so I have this normal solution uh, where I pasted below, uh, just like I talked about, but you will see, oh, you actually have empty stack exception. Why, why is that? Because you, you do have a, a, a negative integer case, which is minus one. So how do we handle that? I think for that problem, lead code is wrong, but because we're practicing interviews, there's no, there's really like, we shouldn't really winning about, oh, yeah, this code is wrong. We should actually just uh, code it up. Uh, okay, a few caveats for the problem, even for both of the cases, right? New is how do we handle non-negative uh, integer? Oh, non-negative integer starting case. Hmm. I think it's, I should change this. This should be more. Uh, should be handle the negative integer case. For example, if you have minus one plus two, or you can have a negative sign that you have bracket like this. Another uh, edge case is also this should be negative integer is, well, this is a, it's not the minus sign is not in the first of the letter, it's a string. It's like more like in the, in the middle of the expression. So it's like one minus bracket minus seven, right bracket. And another new case is, uh, is it's more like this. So we sh what we should really do is, you know, for example, I think in basic calculator one, what I have is we can literally wait or there's a, a heuristic solution is you can actually do all the times minus divided the first and then you do the plus and the minus in the second pass here just notice right so if you have things like this because the order actually matters you cannot just say okay if you know it's a three you uh you push it to the stack and then you don't calculate 15 divided by three and then you just keep because you know it's also a divide you just keep doing that because this will be wrong if you calculate the three minus five first because it's a stack right so you will result a zero and then you if you do 15 divided by zero you will have a a uh, zero divide exception thrown out so what you need to do is as long as you you are able to calculate if you have the both operands and the one operator you should actually calculate um the other caveats are the same as calculator one and two pay attention to the popping out orders which is kind of similar uh like this one and uh, we all know at this we should all know at this moment all the numbers are not single digit they can be any kind of numbers 
So I have two solutions listed out here. One is for uh, assuming they're all non-negative non integers, where if you submit, you will see the this exception because of the negative integer case. So for this one, let me open it up here so that we can see clearly. So this is kind of the solution. It's very similar to the to the uh, solutions before. And also remember, we should always use a long because they do have the stack over integer overflow case. Handling the empty one, digit, valid order, and then here is, is exactly the same as basic calculator one where we are doing the thing. And then, um, yeah, here else is like a normal calculator case. All what we need to do is as long as the object is not empty, and if it's not a left parenthesis, we just continue calculating and then we push the operator and then everything is the same. Okay, so what are the differences? How do we handle the negative integer case given the current code structure? So here's what I did. So, oh, the time complexity and the, and the space complexity is all, all ON, just like before, because we go through the string once and we do have to use an extra stack. Um, Okay, let's talk about how do we handle negative integer case. First case is how do we handle case like this? So what essentially I did is because I already have the code structure or the template to handle those kind of problems, which is one operator stack, one operand stack. What I do here is I will just trim the string and I will just have the first, um, the first letter, if it's a minus, what I will do is I will change this to be minus one, I push a minus one into the operand and I'll push a times into the operator because simply because of this, right? So if I write something, it's like if you have minus one plus two. So once I detected this case, I will just have a minus one in the operator oper operand stack and I push a times into the operator stack. So this is basically equivalent to this. I'm translating this minus one plus two to minus one times one plus two. And then the other case is, let's say minus bracket two plus three. So minus bracket two plus three is essentially the same. I will translate this into a minus one. Note this has to be a long and the times and two plus three. So essentially in your operand stack you have a minus one in your operator stack you have a times so this is what i handle the first case so for the code part uh let me put the code out here so this is the as you can see the basic calculator three code every everything else is that is essentially the same just note here i will trim the stream because i want to just handle the case relatively simple uh kind of a hacky in a way is if if here if operator is empty and then if the first one i equals to zero means the string for the trimmed string if the first one is actually a minus sign what i do is i push a minus one note this, this is going to be a long and push a star sign there else i'll just push everything else so this is basically one difference part to handle the negative integer and the other part um we go back is how do we handle this case? One minus bracket minus seven case. So first of all, I want to call out, luckily this is not a valid, valid expression. You cannot write a uh, expression like one minus minus two, it doesn't make any sense. You, you got to have a bracket. If you want to have a negative integer inside of the expression, you got to have a bracket. The tricky part is because in, uh, unlike the first letter is negative, right? So inside of the expression, a minus could could very well mean just a normal minus operator where you just normally you know push it to the to the operator stack or you compare the um, the priority between different operators. How do you know this is actually denotes for a negative integer? So what I did is I just looking for this case. So the only case this this will look like let's say one minus minus seven. Uh, let's say I write it here. Let me change my color to be okay. Let's just say one minus bracket minus seven. So the only case you will encounter a, ne a negative integer inside in uh, in the middle in between expression has to be 
a, com a combo of this. So it can, has to be, you start with the left bracket. You can have, uh, you know, empty spaces or not empty spaces, and then it follows with a negative sign. You can have spaces, 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 etc. And then you will have a basically a digit, like a number. So this is the only way this means this is actually a negative, uh, a negative integer inside the expression. So what I end up doing is, so it's just like, you know, whenever you see a left bracket, right? There, there might be a chance that you are, now if you're here, there might be a chance this minor sign actually means an actual like a negative integer because there's a chance, right? So, but if you have a letter here, it won't be. If you don't have a letter, like a digit here, it, it very well could be. So I wrote this function called is negative number following left brackets. So what does this function do? So this function essentially is given the current index, I will just need to find if there's a minus sign following escape, escaping all the bracket. And if the next digit is actually a digit. So essentially this is very simple, just esca escaping a, all the empty spaces and I check if a digit is a digit. I could very well write this into like a two lines, but I just feel like I want, I like to break it down into like different functions. So once I have this, once I know it's a negative number following left bracket, that means I know, okay, you are, you're actually a negative number. So I'm doing the same formula. Let's say this is a digit of seven. I'll do the same formula. I will push a minus one into the stack. I'll push a time sign and then that's it. I'll just, the rest of those, basically, if it's a seven, then it, it just means a minus seven. So I will just calculate the minus one times seven. This will become, give me a minus seven, just like that. So yeah, like I, like I did here, if I know it's a, it's a negative number, I push, push a minus one, I push a this, and then I'll just escaping all the things. And then I just continue the code. Um, yeah, so because I'm escaping all the code, I'm not like a going back or anything. So the time and the space complexity is still old in terms of n. Um, right now, if you look at all the existing, I have the link here. If you look at the, the lead code, the solution and stuff, people are always using, assuming it's non-negative, which they will not pass the test cases, which I think the test cases are wrong, but it, it doesn't hurt us to actually implement the ones with negative integers. So uh, this, my method, I think is a little bit hacky, but uh, it's just based on the current code skeleton. So I think it works well and it, it will pass the, uh, the test cases. Um, yeah, that's all I want to say. Thank you for watching guys. See you next time.